Hey, Coach Reeves here today, and today I'm going to show you how to graph and solve a system of inequalities. And we're also going to learn how to write a system of inequalities. But on problem number one, they're going to ask us to graph this system. We've already taken care of you. We've gotten y by itself. My y-intercept is at a negative 3, so I will start at negative 3. 1, 2, 3. I will put a dot on the y-axis at negative 3. My slope is a 4, so that's 4 over 1. So we're going to go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right, 1. When we connect our dots, we have a choice of making a solid line or a broken line. This says y is greater than or equal to. The or equal to, the bar underneath, tells us that we need to have a solid line when we connect these. So we're going to connect these with a solid line. Now we have to decide which side of the line to shape. There's different ways to teach this. Some teachers teach where you need to pick a point and substitute it in to see if it makes a true statement. The easier way that I think is, is we're going to focus on this says right here. This says y is greater than. The y's are getting bigger. So I'm going to ask you to look at your graph and see where it touches the y-axis. My graph touches the y-axis. We're right here at this point. And then I ask my students, where do the y's get bigger? As if I go up or if I go down. From this point, if my y's are getting bigger, they get bigger as I go up. So I will shade on this side of my line. Go to your y-intercept and answer that question. Where are the y's getting greater? They're getting greater as I go up, and it is on this side of my graph. Now we need to grade, excuse me, now we need to graph the second inequality. This says to start at 2 on the y-axis. So we're going to go 1, 2, we're going to put a dot. My slope, it's a negative x, so that's going to be a negative 1 over 1. So we're going to go down 1 to the right 1, down 1 to the right 1, down 1 to the right 1, or I could go up one, left one, up one, left one. Before I connect my dots, I look at the inequality symbol. This does not have a bar underneath. So if it does not have a bar underneath, we're going to use a broken line or a dotted line. So when we connect it, we're going to have a broken or a dotted line. I'm going to ask my students also again, to focus, we'll go in a different color. We're going to focus right here. That says y is less than. So I'm going to go to my y-intercept, and I'm going to ask myself, where do the y's get lesser or smaller? So right here where we touch, where do the y's get lesser or smaller? Well, they get lesser or smaller as I go down. So on this side is where I shade. So what I'm going to ask my students to do is tell me where those two graphs overlap because that is the solution. Let's see if I can pick this up for you. I can pick up the highlighter. And we're going to highlight the overlap is going to be along this broken line here and along this solid line here. And all of this over here, this area is my overlap. That is your solution, okay? Now be careful, because now in the future, we're gonna ask you about points. We're gonna ask you, is a point a solution or a not? Any point, any point that lands in this shaded region is a solution. It'll be a true statement for both of these. Now this is the key point. If a point is on this solid line, that's on the solid line next to the shaded region, any point along this solid line will be a solution. Any point, any point that is touching this broken line, any point that is on that broken line or touching the broken line is not a solution. So this is not a solution. This is not a solution. This intersection 
you're going to say, Coach, it touches the solid line. But it also touches the broken line. It is not a solution. It would be true for the first inequality, but it would not be true for the second inequality. So any point that is in the shaded region or all along the line of a solid line, these are good. This is a good solution. This is bad because it's touching a broken, broken line. This would not be a solution. This would not be a solution. Anything that is on the solid line in the shaded region is a solution. You've got to remember that because it's going to be a test question, and we're going to see if you remember what I'm telling you. Okay? Let's do another example. All right, so we need to get y by itself in order to graph this. So on this top equation, we're going to move the x to the other side. We're going to go minus x minus x. That will leave us with a negative 3y greater than or equal to a negative x minus 3. I'm going to put a 1 right here because I know that we're about to graph and I need it for slope. Okay? I'm going to divide by what? I'm going to divide by negative 3. Divide by negative 3 and divide by negative 3. Remember the rule. If you divide both sides by a negative, you need to flip your symbol and point it the other way. So this is going to cancel. This is going to leave me with y, but I have to flip my symbol. And it's going to be less than or equal to negative divided by negative is a positive one-third x. Negative divided by negative is going to be a positive 1. So we need to graph that inequality. So we're going to come over here to where the y-intercept is a 1. My slope says to go up 1 over 3. I don't have any room, so I'm going to go down 1 over 3. I have a bar underneath. This is less than or equal to, so I'm going to use a solid line. So when I connect my dots, I will have a solid line. It says y is less than. I'm going to ask you to focus right here. It says y is less than or equal to. At your y-intercept, where do the y's get lesser? They get less as I go down. I should shade on this side of the line. Now we need to look at the second inequality. The second inequality I need to also, I need to move my x. I'm going to say minus x minus x. This will cancel, and this is going to leave me with a negative 3y is greater than negative x minus 9. I'm going to put a 1 here because I know I'll need it later on for slope. I divide. I divide by negative 3. Divide by negative 3. This will cancel, but I am dividing by a negative again. And since I divide by negative, I have to flip my symbol and point it the other way. A negative divided by not negative will give us a positive one-third. Negative divided by negative will give us a positive three. So on that inequality, it tells me to start at a positive three. So I will go up to a positive three, one, two, three, put a dot. My slope is 1 over 3, so I'm going to go up 1 to the right 3, or down 1 to the left 3. This does not have a bar underneath, so I will put a broken line or a dotted line. So when I connect my dots, I will use a broken line. I will ask you to focus on this. This says y is less than. The y's are getting lesser. So which way should we shade? Okay. In this situation, right here, my y's are getting lesser. I should, I should shade downward. If this is the case, then where does the overlap occur? The overlap occurs when they start doubling up down here. So if I go to my highlighter, if I graph this along this line, and
and below, this is where they start doubling up. All this down here is where they overlap. All this is an overlap, all this is a solution, okay? And that's how you graph. Now they're gonna ask us to write the system of equations. So we're gonna start, let me go back to my pen. So we're gonna start on this top, this top line right here, this broken line. Now I've taught you in the past that we look at which axis that it touches. This touches or goes through the Y axis, so I'm gonna use the letter Y. Now where does it touch the Y axis? It touches the Y axis at a positive one. Now you have to ask yourself, looking at this, we're right here touching at positive one, are we shading above? Are, we, are my Y values getting greater? Or are my Y values getting lesser as I go down? As you go down, my Y values are getting lesser. So you would say Y is less than one. Now, should I put a bar underneath? No, because this is a broken line, I would not put a bar underneath. So that would be how you would graph or write the inequality for this graph right here. For this solid line, my y-intercept is at negative two. So I'm gonna say y, I'm gonna have a negative two. Let me give yourself a little bit more room. Negative two. Now I'm gonna look at this intersection and I'm gonna count, I'm gonna count boxes and I'm gonna go up one, two, to the right one. I'm gonna go up two, to the right one, which is gonna give me a 2x. My slope is a positive two. Now, for my y-intercept, I'm right here at the y-intercept. Am I shading up or am I shading down? I am shading up, which means my y values are getting bigger. They're getting greater as I go up. So we're gonna say y is greater than. But this is a solid line, so we're gonna put a bar underneath. And that's how would you write the system of inequalities. Let's try it again. Okay, these are parallel. So look what we have. I've got a line here. We're going to look at this line. And my y-intercept is at negative 2. So I have y. I have a negative 2. Let's see if we can find our slope. We're going to travel along until we can find another intersection. Here's an intersection. It goes through the middle of that intersection. So we're going to count boxes. We're going to say we're going to go up, one, two, three. That is a positive three, but we're going to go to the left two. Since we go to the left two, that is going to be a negative two. Three, and that's a negative two. So we're going to write it as a negative three halves. There's your slope. From my y-intercept, from your y-intercept, are we shading up or did we shade down? We shaded up, so that means my y values are bigger. My y values are greater. So we're going to put greater than. This is a solid line, so we're going to put a bar underneath. That is, y is greater than or equal to a negative 3x minus 2. Now, on this line, it's a broken line, okay? We're going to go to our y-intercept. Now, we, already, we can already tell that my lines are parallel. You've done this in Algebra 1. We've done it in Geometry. You know that your lines are parallel, so you're going to end up having the same slope. But we're going to do this anyway. We're going to say y. My y-intercept is a positive 2. We're at a positive 2. We're going to count boxes again. We've got to find another intersection. We're going to have an intersection right here. And we're going to go down. One, two, three. We go down three, so that's a negative three. We go to the right. We're going to go one, two, three. We're going to go to the right, a positive two. Now, we've already said, yes, the slopes were going to be the same because these lines are parallel, but we just confirmed that. Okay. At my y-intercept, at my y-intercept, am I shading up where my y's get bigger, or am I shading down where my y's get smaller? From my y-intercept, I am shading down, so my y's are getting smaller. So we're going to say my y's are less than. Should I put a bar underneath this inequality symbol? 
It's a broken line. It will not get the bar. So then you are finished. There is your system of inequalities. That's how you write it. Okay? So what have we done? We've shown you how to saw our solid solution by graphing, and we've now shown you how to write this system of inequalities. Now, here's the thing. You have to remember, we have to go back and say, any point, we'll just use this graph. If it is on a solid line, if it's on the solid line next to the graph, next to the overlap or the shade, this is a solution. If it is on a broken line, next to the shaded region, it is not a solution. You need to remember that, okay? Broken line is not good, it's not gonna be a solution. The solid line next to the shaded region, it will be a solution, okay? All right, you've gotten a bunch of worksheets. You've got two worksheets with a bunch of problems you need to practice on, okay? Do that to get familiar so you're ready for your test on Thursday. Good luck.